Welcome to Navy League TV. This is Doug Crawford, Navy Leaguer, here with Bill Griggs, Navy Leaguer from Pasadena, who is our host for a pre uh, embark trip that is meant for great Americans and uh, this is the first evening we're here and Bill thank you so much for hosting us. Absolutely my pleasure. Glad to have you aboard. Uh, I love it when people come down to go aboard the aircraft carriers. I spent four years on aircraft carriers myself used to hosting uh, guests and I think this is a good send-off have them come down to Coronado spend the night have a few drinks a few laughs tell a few jokes and then tomorrow they go and uh, they're going to have the exciting time of their lives out there. Well, Bill, I, I really do appreciate it. Bill's the Vice President of the Pasadena Navy League. Yes, I am. We've got uh, Santa Barbara Navy League is hosting this DV trip. We have uh, Grant Ivey, who is a President of the Los Angeles Region and Head of Navy Days LA, and I believe that's how we got introduced to you and invited down here today. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm on the Board of Directors for Navy Days LA also with Grant. So here we are. Here we're talking about 50,000 great Americans around the world and 250 different councils working together to help educate the public and our nation's leaders about the needs of our maritime nation, and that's the purpose for this, weekend, this week's efforts, and uh, thank you so much for being such a gracious host. Absolutely our pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Karen Crawford. Hi, Karen Bill Gray. Nice to meet you. you thank you so much Kevin for having us. Yeah, nice to have you. Thanks for having us. And the food's all down here, so we're trying okay. to get it. Okay. I was the secretary of Pasadena Navy League, yes. and I just got voted last week to be VP. Oh, you're, in. you're in. But I'm not a salesman. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. I said, well, I can do the VP because there's two we're merging the uh, Pasadena Foundation together uh -huh. for the USS Pasadena. Navy League TV, we're here this evening for a wonderful event. Uh, we're going to be sending off a group of great Americans who are going to be spending some time with our nation's finest sons and daughters aboard the USS Ronald Reagan while it's at sea just two days before it deploys for the Middle East. We hope that you'll enjoy the show and that you'll have an opportunity to be able to show this and ask other people to take a look at it to see what Navy League of the United States does in educating the nation and our nation's leaders about the needs of our maritime nation. I'd like to introduce you to Bob Bradway. Bob is one of the individuals that is uh, elected to be able to go aboard this ship and I was just curious if you could tell our you know, watching audience, what it means to you to be able to go aboard this ship? Oh, well, Doug, this is an honor and a privilege, a lifetime dream to be able to go on board an active working aircraft carrier, part of the United States Navy, a treat. I can't tell you how excited I am about it. I think the, uh, the big question that all of us are going to be asking is, what is it that you're most apprehensive about knowing that you're going to be tail hooking onto an aircraft carrier? I'm not at all worried about the tail hook. I'm worried about the seasickness, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bob, I can tell you from firsthand experience, you're going to be having, shaking hands and, and watching first-time pilots be able to qualify before they deploy. And uh, I, I do appreciate your taking time off to be able to come down and do this. And we look forward to speaking with you during the trip and learning more about the experience as you're uh, flying aboard and spending a night during uh, qualifications aboard the USS Ronald Reagan. Well, as I say, this is the treat of a lifetime, and the DV program is a wonderful way for citizens like me and my colleagues here tonight to have the opportunity to learn more about the Navy. So thank you very much for hosting us this evening. We're delighted to be here. It's a pleasure and an honor, and good luck. Thank you. Okay. okay. We have a group of 16 great Americans that have the opportunity to do something aboard an USS aircraft carrier, and I'm here with Tom Snow at the Coronado Yacht Club the night before they deploy. And Tom, if you could just give me an idea of what it is you think about going aboard, and uh, what is it you're a little apprehensive about, if you are at all? Uh, you know, having visited the Reagan through your good graces uh, four years ago, um, I've had a chance to, you know, it's not a, a complete surprise to me. And I'm just look, you know, I'm not apprehensive. I'm just, a, I'm like a kid before Christmas. It feels like, you know, I'm just really excited. Tom, have you ever, have you ever flown aboard an aircraft carrier before? Uh, no. 
When we talk about great Americans that volunteer their time to educate the public about the needs of our maritime nation and that actually do something to bring, I'm not talking about hundreds, I'm talking about thousands of Americans that wear the uniform of our nation to our shores, whether it be in Santa Barbara or Los Angeles. It's this guy I'm standing next to right now, Mr. Grant Ivey, president of the area, of Los Angeles area, president also of LA Navy Days, and the host, the guy that's really pulled it all together and done a fantastic job. Council's working together. A, a pre-embark, uh, a pre-yacht uh, club, uh, a cocktail party, a uh, uh, just an incredible communication through this whole whole process of setting up this DV grant. What is it that makes you want to do all this for the Navy League and the people that get involved? The sailors. It's basically to educate the public out there about what they do, uh, their service to our country, and that a lot of the people out there don't really understand exactly what it takes for them to run an aircraft carrier and see what they're going to see on this uh, distinguished visitor uh, trip that they're going to go on. It's, uh, they're going to come back uh, changed. F-18s, 5,000 men and women wearing the cloth of our nation. I'm here with Bill Guilfoyle at the Coronado Yacht Club. And Bill, I'd like to know, what does it mean to you on, to, to go aboard this uh, incredible ship and to make this trip of 36 hours with some of our nation's finest? Well, I think uh, most guys from the time they're young, when they see the first aircraft carrier, dream of the opportunity to land on one. So obviously that's going to be exciting. And I'm a lifelong sailor, and I'm uh, actually planning the trip across the ocean this summer. So it's going to be great to be with professional mariners. I think this is a, a good one, not only the professional mariners, but some of the finest aviators in the world. And in case you have any problems, I'm sure you'll make some friends so that if you need to be picked up, that you can do that. Well, I'm uh, looking forward to, to meeting them, and uh, hopefully it'll be the beginning of a uh, long relationship with, uh, with uh, the seamen in Santa Barbara. Excellent. Santa Barbara Navy League. Best Navy League in the world. Thanks, Bill. So Navy League of the United States operates the way it does because of volunteers, members, donors, people that step up to the plate because they have something that they want to accomplish and something they want to give back to those men and women who serve our country. I'm pleased and honored to be standing here with the new president of the Santa Barbara Navy League, Kevin McTagg. And, and Kevin, what is it about you know this responsibility as president of one of the finest Navy Leagues in the world that you find is your biggest challenge? Uh, the challenge, I think, is uh, to get uh, the community involved as far as education. We want to get out the word to the community in Santa Barbara exactly what it is that our men and women of the of the Naval uh, Services do for our country, not only all around the, uh, the country and the world, but in the Santa Barbara Ventura uh, area itself. Um, and I think that is I think that's our number one challenge. It's very easy when we have uh, a ship visit because there uh, is a lot of interest uh, involved. It's 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 there. It's right in front of everybody. But it's in between those visits. I think it's the biggest challenge to to generate the interest, to provide the information, to get it out to uh, uh, to the men and women of our community about uh, what our what our service men and women do for us. Well, this is one of those opportunities between ship visits with budget cuts and wars that are being fought around the world and uncertainty and in everything and everywhere that we look. It's all that much more important that we improve everything we can do about the morale and boost and saying thank you to those men and women. So there's 5,000 aboard the USS Ronald Reagan and you're about to go aboard that lovely ship for the first time. What is, what is it that you're excited about doing when you're aboard the ship? Well, naturally the landing and the takeoff, uh, but on board, I think just going around, uh, seeing how the operations work, uh, but really a meeting uh, and talking with uh, the servicemen and women on board. The Coronado Yacht Club has been kind enough to host us here. Before we go aboard a DV, we've got 16 great Americans. Mr. Michael Tobes involved in, as well to go aboard this aircraft carrier tomorrow. And Mr. Tobes, we'd just like to know what does it mean to you to be able to fly aboard a ship with a piece of American soil out at sea with 5,000 Americans aboard that ship? Well, it's really exciting for me to be here and to have this wonderful opportunity. I was a Lieutenant JG in the Navy about 100 years ago and uh, was never aboard a ship in the three years that I was in the Navy. So uh, this is great for me to do, do something like this. And, uh, a couple of years ago, I went on another uh, cruise with uh, a landing ship and uh, met some just wonderful, wonderful people. The crews are just absolutely superb, and I was very impressed. I'm looking forward to this. For some of you have this uh, challenge coin in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a story behind this challenge coin. Uh, 1917, World War uh, One. there was a 
pilot who had a squadron of my wing planes were flying over Germany, and he, uh, he was uh, from a wealthy family, and uh, I think he graduated from Yale. Anyway, he made a coin with a medallion on it, and he gave it to each one of the uh, pilots in his squadron, and it had an emblem of the squadron. So one of those pilots put it in a leather pouch around his neck and got shot down over Germany and uh, <coughs> imprisoned. And they took all of this insignia from the guy. Uh, he later escaped back to the French line. And they were going to shoot this guy. They thought he was a, a spy from Germany. But somebody discovered in this pouch this coin with an emblem from the uh, squadron. And they, instead of shooting him, uh, they gave him a wine. Uh -huh. So there's the story of the challenge coin. Now so keep your coin. Your coin. Um, the challenge comes in it with um, people of the same ship or the same uh, squadrons or units in the army. The Air Force has these coins too. Uh, admirals have their own coins. So anyway, if you have your coin and you're at a bar and somebody pulls it out and wraps on the bar like this, that's a challenge. So all of you bring your coins out and you wrap like that too, that means the challenge is. So if I wrap and all of you have a coin, well, I got to buy you all a drink. So but if I wrap like that and you don't have your coin, then you buy the drink. So these things, sailors love. We've given you guys uh, three each. Now one is for you. The next two are for you to give sailors. Many of you already uh, understand what it is the Santa Barbara Navy League does, but I want to uh, bring it to uh, more of a personal uh, uh, issue with what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to be on the ship tomorrow, and the USS uh, Ronald Reagan is uh, a ship that has been adopted by uh, the Santa Barbara Navy League and was involved in the commissioning uh, of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the USS Reagan. And as we go around the ship, you'll see what the Santa Barbara Navy League has done, which is. Uh, one of the two goals of the Santa Barbara Navy League. One is to help and support and serve uh, those who uh, support and serve us um, uh, in, in the Navy and all the naval, naval services. And the other part is education. But the part that you'll see tomorrow is uh, what the Santa Barbara Navy League did as part of the commissioning and the adoption. Uh, and one of our goals and missions uh, a part, uh, as part of support and serve is enhancements on the ship. Uh, the ships come out and they are bare bones uh, and the uh, Santa Barbara Navy League and other Navy Leagues do for the ships that they adopt is to help kind of fill it out a little bit uh, by providing uh, <coughs> uh, things such as, geez, Doug, you can go help me out a little bit more. Yeah, well, exactly everything right. from the chapel to the basketball court to the vans that are on board it. Um, you know, any uh, the workout rooms, the computers, the libraries. One of the one of their latest requests or discussion was they you know, they have a, a barber shop. They wanted to have a Harley Davidson theme to it. So uh, <laughs> things like that, just to kind of make it a little bit more uh, part of their ship. Uh, you know, uh, that's the tangible, uh, the tangible thing. Uh, hopefully, what you we, you'll see is the morale that we uh, we try to instill and 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 boost tomorrow. Part of that being the, the the challenge coins that we're talking about. Other things that the Santa Barbara Navy League does through its support of uh, adopted, uh, whether it's adopted units or ships, uh, involves scholarships, for instance, for uh, not only sailors but for their families. Uh, other things we do is while they're on deployment, uh, again, this is seven, six to seven months, uh, there's families that are left behind. What is it we can do to, to provide uh, morale, support, uh, to help them through that, uh, that difficult time? Uh, and hopefully uh, you'll all be able to get a, a good flavor of uh, what it is uh, that we like to do uh, as part of our mission uh, to support and, uh, again, support and serve those who support and serve us uh, every day. So thank you very much for joining us. Might be somebody yeah, sure. who's from your hometown too. That's another great way to break the ice, because these kids are from all over the country. Yeah. Right? So, and I just want to I just want to take one other moment. Kevin Winsing, the gentleman that that I wouldn't be here. We all wouldn't be here probably in the group that we're in today if Kevin hadn't had something to do with our being here in the first place. The Kevin was the public affairs officer for the Secretary of the Navy for eight years. Mr. Gordon England, who was just an incredible American, came to Santa Barbara twice. Uh, CEO of General Dynamics, uh, yeah, Lockheed Aircraft Company, and then uh, 
uh, executive vice president of General Dynamics before he became the Navy Secretary. Yeah. And 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 then he then he became the public affairs officer for the Deputy Secretary of Defense under Rumsfeld below under Rumsfeld. And I I would very much uh, like to add that probably one of the greatest uh, uh, honors I've had in my career has been to host a party aboard the USS Sequoia, the presidential yacht, on November the 18th. Uh, thanks to USO and partnering with the Navy League, we invited wounded warriors and some of the top executives of our defense industry to come aboard on November the 18th. So thanks to Kevin Winsing, and I'd like to introduce Mr. Sloan Gibson, the CEO of USO, has come here to, to be here with us just to say good day to you and good evening to you and see you off on this trip. So, so the past president of the Santa Barbara Navy League and the current national vice president of public affairs and education, it's a great honor to have you guys here. And one of the primary reasons that Theodore Roosevelt created the Navy League more than a hundred years ago was to educate the public, and that is why you are here. You are here one-on-one -on -one to meet the sailors, the junior officers, and senior officers, and commanding officer of the USS Ronald Reagan and it's going to change your life. And that is what we want to have happen, to educate the public. We actually will celebrate our 70th birthday uh, Friday, <coughs> uh, Franklin Roosevelt, back in February of 41. Got together six different organizations uh, that he felt like needed to come together to help support our troops as uh, uh, we were preparing dinner in World War II. And, uh, and, and we've, been, uh, we've been at it ever since. Uh, the USO, when people hear the name today, they still think entertainment, and we do a lot of entertainment. Um, 700 performances and events last year. Almost every date on the calendar, uh, there are celebrities somewhere in the world uh, with troops and families. People also th think about the centers that we have. We're up now to about 160. More often than not, they, they see a sign or they hear an announcement in an airport. And um, that's what they think of. But in fact, most of our centers are on military installations. Uh, we're in Kuwait, and, uh, Afghanistan, uh, Iraq. We uh, have eight centers now in Afghanistan in particular. Uh, we're in Korea, mainland Japan, and Okinawa, and Europe. And we're on military installations around the country. And then, uh, as we were talking earlier tonight, a, a lot of the things we do today, uh, we do because the needs of our troops and families have changed. So uh, we've got programs that reach all the way to the small fire base and combat outpost in Afghanistan for, for our men and women that are serving in harm's way. Uh, we do a lot of things for military families that are going through that tough cycle of deployments. Uh, not just missing our loved ones, but worried that their loved ones may not come home uh, safely. So we do an awful lot of things for wounded warriors and their families. Uh, we were talking earlier about the the Sequoia cruise, but it, it ranges the gamut all the way from the time they leave the battlefield until the time they're returning to their community to prepare for a happy and fulfilling life ahead. <coughs> and then we also uh, uh, are there for our families of the fallen. USO has centers at two centers at Dover Air Force Base. Every dignified transfer since before 9 11, no matter what time of day or night, the USO staff and volunteers have been there to support the families and to support the troops that are participating in the dignified transfer. And we partner with lots of organizations, including the Navy League, uh, to do things to help take care of them and our wounded warriors and our, and our military families. So uh, this is a great partnership for us. Uh, we're looking for more and more ways to work together. I, you know, one of the big undertakings that we have in the, in the pipeline right now is uh, the, the, the largest and finest USO center anywhere in the world uh, at the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. Uh, they will start the construction this year to be the focal point for support of wounded warriors and their families there. And uh, so lots of opportunities for us to work together. And we're grateful for this partnership that we have with the Navy. Uh, thanks. Treat to be here. You guys have a great trip. What an honor it is to have the president and CEO of USO, and I think that's a name that's synonymous with service to our service members. Sloan, thank you so much for being here. And what is it you think about when you hear the scene of a bunch of Americans about to go off on a DV aboard the USS Ronald Reagan? Well, I know that they're going to have a great experience, and the best part of it's going to be the opportunity to spend time with our men and women that are serving our country. Uh, this is this is the new greatest generation for America. 
and I think an awful lot of these folks are going to be reminded of that tomorrow. So uh, USO, as I said, is synonymous with service to American soldiers. Tell me a little bit about what USO is doing today, and, and how long have you guys been around? Well, we, we'll actually celebrate our 70th anniversary later this week. Um, people think of the USO, they think of entertainment. We still do a lot of that, 700 shows a year. Uh, we have a lot of centers, 160 centers around the world. People will see the sign or hear the announcement in the airport. Uh, but many of our USOs are on military installations around the world, Afghanistan, Iraq, Kuwait, South Korea, and other locations. But today, uh, an awful lot of our work uh, is around those that we feel like need us the very most. Uh, our men and women serving in forward areas in harm's way, the military families that are going through that uh, tough cycle of deployments, not just missing their loved ones, but worried that their loved ones are going to come home safe. Uh, our wounded warriors and their families. Uh, some of whom have survived injuries on the battlefield that they wouldn't have survived in earlier wars. And that's the good news. The bad news is that uh, their lives have been turned upside down and their families' lives as well. And then lastly, our families of the fallen, uh, being there for them uh, as they uh, work their way through their grief. So those are some of the folks that we feel like need us the most today and that we work the hardest for. We're proud to have the opportunity to partner with the Navy League. Uh, you guys are an, uh, an incredible organization. You've been around a lot longer than we have, and, uh, and we're just proud to have an opportunity to partner with you from time to time. Yeah, I should have a little convoy over there. Rolling. Oh, rolling. Uh oh. Smile. Where are we going? Uh, <laughs> We're going to go get briefed. <laughs>
1902, the dawn of a new century. With the support of President Theodore Roosevelt, the Navy League of the United States is formed to provide a powerful voice for strong sea services, which are vital to the nation's liberty and prosperity. Whether at home or abroad, the Navy League provides support to our men and women of the sea services around the world. Local councils adopt ships and units, providing morale and welfare support and assistance to their crews and their families. Navy League's prestigious awards recognize outstanding individuals for their leadership and accomplishments within the sea services and maritime industry, promoting leadership, professionalism, and morale. Homecoming ceremonies and ship visits are special events organized and sponsored by local councils as are ship christenings and unit commissionings. With the help of individual and corporate members, the sea services become integrated into the local communities they serve and protect. In addition to providing support today to the men and women serving at home and abroad, the Navy League always looks to the future, to today's young people and tomorrow's leaders. Scholarship programs provide financial assistance to the dependents and direct descendants of sea service personnel. And Navy League supported youth programs such as the Naval Sea Cadet Corps and Navy and Marine Corps Junior ROTC give thousands of young people the opportunity to develop leadership skills, test their limits, and perhaps prepare for a career in one of the sea services. The need for a strong, vital sea service, recognized by Theodore Roosevelt in 1902, is no less today. The challenges facing our nation have never been greater. More than 100 years later, the Navy League continues to answer the call. Your support makes a difference to our men and women of the sea services who serve today and will serve tomorrow in support of American sea power. As one Secretary of the Navy said, the sun never sets on the Navy League.